overthinking. <laughs> Often seen as a fault, a negative aspect in the arsenal of a human being. But to me, it is a gift. Before I elaborate on this, I'd like to recite to you a poem. You're at the grocery store, at the checkout. The cashier says hello, and you say hello back. But as you say hello, you have a voice crack? You remember this embarrassing moment for the rest of your life, and it lives rent-free in your mind, for tis but a strife. This was me a few months ago. I'd overthink the shit out of small things that would happen in my daily life, like speaking to the cashier, for example. And chances are, you may relate a little bit to my experience. You strongly desire to have an empty mind, to be like the Buddha. You don't need to reach enlightenment, to perform ego death, or any of that jazz in order to overcome your overthinking. I'll show you how I transformed my annoying silly little overthinking into the weapon of mass productivity that I'm using right now. I'm Ablikim, formal social anxious dude turned into a treasure trove of ideas. The steps of this video will change your views on overthinking completely. Let me tell you a story regarding an, another experience I had with overthinking. So my French teacher had assigned the whole class a project on philosophy. Essentially, we had to write an essay about a philosophical ideal and then uh, come up with the pros and cons about said ideal. It was such a cool thing at the time. You know, I was heavily into Greek philosophy, into Stoicism, uh, meditations by Marcus Aurelius. But as you can imagine, my overthinking appeared out of nowhere like some little gremlin, a lizard. What if I make a bad essay? What if, uh, what if I'm good at this, but I make a bad essay? What if the teacher doesn't like the ideology I chose and decides to make a fool out of me, out of everyone? It was such a weird thing to overthink about. And I started to fear the work. I didn't want to do it anymore. Then I remembered something from meditation. For think how many things on which you have set your heart have not happened. I shut my mind up and got to work, ignoring my stupid brain. After school, I immediately went back home, got on my chair, picked up my pen, and started writing the outline. Something surprising happened to me. I was coming up with so many new ideas, and I didn't have any kind of writer's block. For a good freaking two hours, I was just constantly, constantly writing on this topic. I didn't even need to research anything. Ideas were just coming in my head like a flow in a waterfall stream. For all my freaking life, until the age of 15, I had never worked on a project that actually got me excited and interested. I had turned my overthinking into a weapon of mass productivity. Here are steps you can take to do it too. First off, you need to redefine the word. Overthinking has become this negative thing associated with mental illness and social anxiety. By changing the letters of this word, you, we can turn it into something positive. Divergent thinking. Instead of labeling yourself as an overthinker, think of yourself as a divergent thinker. From this moment onward, you are no longer an overthinker. Now, what is divergent thinking? Before that, there are two types of thinking I'd like to introduce you to. There's the one that the school system has forced upon us, and that is the convergent type of thinking. It's basically mathematics, algebra. There are all these different elements to a problem and you gather them all towards a single solution. There's X amount of oranges and Y amount of apples. Oranges cost $4, apple co apples cost $5. John has $304 worth of fruit. How many fruits does John have? You know, that bullshit. The thing is with this type of thinking that it's kind of useless. What is the point of thinking this robotic way? It's just so lame and boring. And most of us don't even need this type of thinking. Overthinking is a type of convergent thinking. You experience a situation, there are all these different types of scenarios inside of your head, and you lead them towards a single answer, and that is death. You overthinking the cashier's behavior is tied to death. You fear that you may have offended her, that she calls security, that security escorts you to prison, and in prison you get shanked to death. Like That is what overthinking is. Instead of this useless, unproductive way of thinking, I present to you divergent thinking. It's the contrary to overthinking. You have this problem and you try to find as many different solutions as possible. 
but how does this relate to overthinking? When you, when you speak to the cashier, instead of thinking of ways it could lead you to death and that you're creepy, think of ways it could not. So an example of a convergent thinker would be like, I smiled like a freak, I didn't shower, I smell like shit, she thinks I'm a creepy. And the difference is with a divergent thinker, it'll be more like, she doesn't think I'm creepy because she's probably a decent human being. I don't smell bad, my hair is clapped, I got 10 inch bicep, you, you get what I mean. Do you see the difference in this way of thinking? Divergent thinking is such a powerful tool that you can use all the time and you need to learn it ASAP. It will carry in every aspect of your life. You can find different ways to solve a problem. This is where the productivity aspect of overthinking comes in. The thing with overthinking is that all your thoughts are amplified. So if you use divergent thinking, that means your thoughts are more, you have more thoughts than say a normal person because of the natural neuro neuroticism in your brain. So you're basically more efficient in coming up with ideas. You now understand that overthinking is in fact in reality a blessing in disguise. Consider it like your, your superpower, your, your ability to think divergently. Now, how do, you, how do you use it to improve productivity? There are three advantages to divergent thinking. Number one is decision making. Imagine this, two programmers are given the same task. One is a convergent thinker and the other a divergent one. The convergent thinker, he's kind of dumb, right? He only knows one way to solve this problem. And that is his own knowledge, what school taught him, types on his keyboard, and he wastes one week worth of time on completing this simple task. Now the other programmer, he's a little more smarter. What he does, he tries to brainstorm on all the different ways he could solve this task. He could do it alone, he could do it alongside AI, he could outsource the work to another programmer, he could have an assistant do it for him, so it's outsourcing again. He could make code that would automate this task. There, he knows all these different possibilities and via decision making, he chooses the quickest one and he finishes his task in less than one day. So he has six days more than the, the other programmer. This is the power of overthinking. The ability to have, this is the power of overthinking, the option of decision. It's literally free game. You have so many ideas that you can use. I know many normal people with effective brains struggle to come up with ideas. They have like this white page inside of their head. This is a normal effective brain. It's not as quick as the overthinkers. Their thoughts are amplified so they can come up with ideas even faster. It's literally a blessing if you are an overthinker. Here's a brick. Tell me all the possible ways you could use this brick. Write it down on a piece of paper and time yourself in one minute. How many ideas can you come up with in one minute? You can pause this video and time yourself. Chances are, if you're an overthinker, these ways came up to you so easily, like a flow, a stream. When I first did it, did, when I first did this exercise, I managed to come up with the brick being used as a decoration inside of an aquarium. Who the fuck thinks of this? Divergent thinking over thinkers. I label myself as a proud divergent thinker. We just tend to use our abilities to our deficit. We think negatively. We convergently think. You need to reprogram this behavior ASAP. Number three is infinite motivation. This one is kind of bro science about uh, the topic of overthinking. It's just, a, it, it's just that whenever I'm able to come up with so many ideas on a, a single topic, I just feel so excited and passionate. I feel so motivated. With my uh, essay on philosophy, I overthink all the ways stoicism could be both good and bad. This is an uh, excerpt from my text on stoicism. Stoics have the great advantage of being able to conserve their reputation. By never showing their emotions, they form an image of strong men with self-control. Stoicism can, however, become a double-edged sword by bottling up emotions in an unhealthy way. Stoics can burst once and the identity they forged in the mind of others corrupts. They lose trust by changing the identity the others formed in their mind and lead to ostracization. How the fuck did I come up with this kind of text at 15 years old with no research, simply the ideas inside of my head? 
I remember I was feeling so good writing this text down. I didn't have any blocking and I felt unstoppable. The ideas just came pouring in and this empowering feeling can give you so much power and infinite motivation. I frankly don't need much discipline because through overthinking, I managed to create an infinite amount of motivation for myself. And this is the third way overthinking can help you in productivity. I believe, however, that the best use of overthinking is by starting a project that you are mildly passionate about, mildly interested, not even strongly interested. Because we tend to do nothing. We overthink so damn much that we just freeze and run away. When you start convergently thinking, pull the, the kill switch inside of your brain and just do something. Start your project, start that channel. So you can tap in the infinite motivation that awaits for you. If you manage to gain even a small percentage of value through this video, please consider subscribing or leaving a like or doing both really. You can even subscribe to my Substack down in the description below. I really appreciate any support and feedback. Think divergently and uh, see ya.